CBC's Lauren McGinnis and I playing NHL 94. What does that have to do with anything? This is a disclaimer. This episode's going to get very, very weird. Check out uh, this episode. And after, uh, we're going to be giving away uh, some free tickets to uh, my movie. So this episode is actually sponsored by my movie, Pixelated Heroes. And I'll be giving away some tickets to Midway, uh, the major motion picture coming out. I got some tickets, so check out. If you're in Canada, and if you're in Yelma, check out the end of the episode. Uh, let's just get into it. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 20 of Flame Savers. Hello, everybody. Today is a big day. We just got a box from St. Hubert, ENA, the best school in the world, and we've been waiting a long time. I'm a little out of breath because it is heavy. 80 pounds. Yes. 80 pounds. <laughs> so we're going to open it up right now and show you guys what we got. That must be in there. Mm. Nothing. Not absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> oh, they're there. Oh my god. So those are the wingtip reinforcements. My god. I must say ENA they know how to uh, to ship something. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what do we have here? So here it's the wingtip reinforcements for the um, the wingtips basically. So there's two that goes on each side of those things. Of those webs, Jasper. <laughs> The one oh, Jasper, the Jasper eight, one. The Jasper one. So those are the reinforcements. They just snap on each side like that, and uh, they're they're there to give reinforcement basically. So Stella will have to deeper then. I don't know where she is. She's at right now. More job for Stella. Okay. So enough of that boring wood. Yeah. What's this? What's this? So some pieces. Okay. And it's like Christmas. <laughs> oh, shit. Holy smokes. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is our jig for the ribs. <laughs> it's pretty big. <laughs> and we have three total of them. And more importantly, where did it come from? From E and E. Who, who, who designed it? Oh, who designed it? Myself. It's my own design. First time I designed something in aluminum that is actually like a real thing now. It's like a real Look object. at that folks, look at it. Look how massive <laughs> this thing is. Um, it's, I'm gonna be really, I think if it works out like I want it to, I'm gonna be really proud of it. So, so how much How much um, uh, money was it in aluminum? Uh, about, two, I think, how, how much was it again? That was $800. 800, that yeah. was an $800 aluminum chunk. Yeah. For three jigs in total. What do you think, Stella? Yeah, looks pretty good, eh? <laughs> nice, gonna be really cool. Yeah. And since they're made out of aluminum, they're gonna be uh, like, they're gonna be uh, used forever. I mean, it's if someone nice. else wants to build a DR1, I mean, they, they'll be immortal. That's the word I've been <laughs> looking for. <laughs> I, think the, I, 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 think, I think one of these will end up on eBay yeah. Easter egg later on, when we're done. <laughs> So, uh, God damn, I'm so impressed. And thanks, I must say thanks to Pascal, which is the technician who helped me to uh, make this possible with the CNC uh, router, the one we use at ENA. She was operating the machine. So basically, I did the, the, the drawings and stuff, but she really did all the operations for it. Just so you know, rib jigs, so these are the main, how many ribs was there, 56? Uh, ribs, yeah, yeah, about 56. Yeah. So there's about 56 ribs, and each rib takes a day worth of drying. Yeah, 24 hours. So, oh, here's Rod. So these are three different ones. Uh, two, there's two that are the same, and the top one is for the, the landing gear ribs. How come you got two of them? Oh, because uh, time is important, time is money. <laughs> We're gonna do two at a time. Yeah, two at a time. It's 24 hours per So you can per put rib. the, you can glue the strips on the set them in here. Yeah. And it holds it together? Yeah. And then once it's uh, after 24 hours, you take and you have two ribs in one day. So that's the plan. Because just for ribs, it's 56 days, basically. Without counting the, the 
failed ribs because it's gonna happen probably. What kind of glue do you use? Uh, T88, I think. It's right there. It's epoxy. Mm -hmm. Two parts. Oh, nice. So we have that. We did the design. Yeah. And then with uh, this summer, with a technician, we went into, into uh, the cutting of them. So there they are. <laughs> and then smokes. Okay, folks, this is what it's all about. This part right here, Benjamin has to start assembling this like a Lego set. The only problem is when you buy Lego, it's all formed in those <laughs> nice little blocks. We're not that lucky. So what's going on right now is we're gonna be starting to temporarily make our first rib. But first we have to do some forming, which is gonna take a couple days. Luckily it's Friday, we got the weekend. I think I'm gonna do a, um, a live video on Sunday by some time. Um, but let's, uh, let's get into the fact of how we're gonna make the parts. Okay, so we got to start putting in the groove of the cat strips, not that cat. Uh, as you can see, if you look really close, uh, these cat strips need a little bit of a little edge in them, which is 1 16th, is it? One, one sixteenth of an inch. We had to get, like, the, the one blade was in Montreal, long story was on eBay. I don't know if we put that in an episode. Long story short, we got to put a 1 16th inch gap in these things, which is gonna be highly technical because these things are, what, four, five, five feet long? Seven feet long. Seven feet long, so see if we can do it. Yeah, you good. Well, Springer, you not like that. But you cut more, there's lots of pieces, not one piece. Yeah, it's perfect, I think. Yep. That's what it's supposed to be like? Yep. So no one knows but you. 3 16th of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on. Good. Nothing's hitting the blade right now? Nothing. Oh. Okay, you ready? What do you think, Benjamin? I think it's pretty good, looks centered. Let's go 187. 1875. So oh, he's, <laughs> he's bullying me. Bullying me. <laughs> this is a non bullying oh. workplace. Oh, kitty! Yep, perfect. Good. So uh -huh. did, did good. you have anything? <laughs> good plan. Good yeah. ideas, and it worked. Yeah, nice. Okay, look at that, folks. Benjamin, what do you think? It's really good. It came out better than I thought. Yeah, for the first try. Okay, how many of these we gotta do? So there is a bunch. I don't remember how many I ordered, but uh, there's a bunch. The whole pile that's there. Okay, so but these, each one of these can make two ribs. Uh, yeah, no, no. Each one of these do the top and the bottom. Oh, of, uh, each so rib. each one of these is just one rib. One rib. So yeah. you, are you gonna cut this in half and? Trying to assemble a rib? Yeah. Okay, it's folks, rib day. time. You hungry? <laughs> We're having ribs. Okay, so Benjamin's got his setup here. As you can see, uh, everything's kind of like a jig, as you can see, to f put in the strips, um, which is awesome. So it's working out pretty good. Yeah, working out good. Oh, I was hoping, I was hoping to make some ribs, but actually, believe it or not, it's gonna take up to what six days yes, for us days to go from cutting the the what do we call that? Is that like a, the groove? The groove. Yeah. Cutting the groove from cutting the groove to putting it in the jig. If you can remember the big aluminum jig, um, it's gonna be six days. So what's gonna take us six days? So first of all, uh, like I I think I already explained by stick with the grooves inside, we'll have two pieces. Like we'll cut them in half of the distance. So we'll have at the end, uh, in one stick, the bottom part and basically like the top part of uh, your rib here, okay? And this top part right there, at this uh, section, around here to here, 
So all, all here needs to be pre-bent before being installed in the jig. Okay, so... And that process takes... Which six. means is we have a straight piece, yeah. which is this, and we're going to need to have a not straight piece <laughs> to fit on there. So how do we make this straight piece have a little bit of a thing? How All do right. we do that? So there's a, like, there's a certain tolerance where you can just bend your stick and put it in the jig. Like this uh, area, uh, right like after the, the rib, like on the rear section of the rib, you, could, you, you will be just able to put it by bending it in the jig. But at the leading edge, we'll have to soak every tip about, uh, I don't know, one foot and a half we soak every tip in water, so we'll take a string from the ceiling and then hang the sticks in a bucket of water for three days so they soak up water. That's what the drawing says. And then I made those bending jigs uh, out of CNC. At the same time, I did the, the jigs for the ribs. So how it works, basically, you open it, you open it, you open it your jig like that. You, you put <laughs> your cap strip with the groove and well soaked in it like that. Shoop. And then I won't do it because it's gonna crack. But at the end, you close it like that, you clamp it, and it gives it the leading edge bend shape. So that's how we're gonna do, and three days of drying for that. So total six days. Three days in the water, three days in that jig, and yes. one day in the big jig. Exactly, 24 hours. So seven days for one reel. <laughs> so it, this is just like it's like moonshine right if your first batch is going to take you a bit but then if you stagger your batches you're going to have moonshine all year long right. so this is just the first bit so of course we can't show that in today's episode again making the long strip uh with the little curve using that machine now uh, as promised a little bit in the beginning of the movie uh, i'm going to give a promo to my documentary pixelate heroes at the end um we have, uh, if you haven't seen the live stream, go check out the live stream, it turned out pretty good. It's like two hours, <laughs> last live stream, but it's good. We uh, have an eBay item, Williams Took. Williams Took is on eBay, link down below. But there's also another eBay item uh, that we're gonna go check out right now. And then after that, uh, because we're gonna have to wait for seven days here, but we'll mm -hmm. figure out something. Uh, we're gonna tell you the story of how Benjamin even ended up on the Plane Savers team. This is quite the weird story. So yeah. check that out and we'll be seeing you very soon. Well, Chucky? Yeah? What, you been seeing stuff? Yeah, I went into your little uh, play, uh, save a plane there and I'm starting to see actually a little process. Uh, progress, I should say. And I, you know what else I got to say, Mikey? It's mm -hmm. about goddamn time because it was kind of looking not too good there for a while. <laughs> looking a little better today though. <laughs> Good, I'm glad to see that. Okay, you guys, quick eBay update. Uh, the, as of right now, the Plane Savers book is at $300 Canadian on eBay. Thank you. Stella hasn't signed it yet. Stella, do you want to sign it? Where do I sign? So Stuka's is really wild. Benjamin, what's the yes. story? So the story is that actually the first time I really encountered any uh, Plane Saver uh, organizers was Stuka, <laughs> the first one, because actually, it was a, a, a really big coincidence. When we were in Montreal in St. Schubert, I was uh, living on the street, uh, like a, we're full of apartments basically. So you weren't living on the streets, you were I living know. on a street. <laughs> on a street, yeah, thank you for the correction. I was living on a street in my apartment with uh, other roommates and stuff. And I remember there's one episode, if Mikey you could find a clip where you, you show my apartment, it could be really great. But Mikey films outside of his apartment and I didn't, uh, I didn't know Mikey, neither Stella or uh, anyone before. I knew who they were, but I never encountered them. So he films outside and I'm like, oh cool, it looks like my, where I live, it looks like the same apartments and stuff. So then just, just by total curiosity, I, I, I stick my head out and I see the plane server van right in front of my apartment. So actually Mikey and Stella were my neighbors when it all began and that's like by total coincidence and I didn't think they would be there I didn't know nothing so one night I go to um, I go at school and I come back uh, really late like I think in uh, midnight or something because I was doing a career computer programming programming so I come back at midnight and then their door opens and Stuka just starts running like all across the street uh, across the street starts running with another dog I don't remember I think uh, What's up? Twixie. Twixie, another dog which was uh, living where Mikey was living with Stella. 
And then there's a, a guy named John Ray, uh, which came by and looked at me and said, do you know where the dogs went? So I point, I say, oh yeah, Stuka. And I, I think I said, oh yeah, the dog went over there. And then when the dog really came by, I, I recognized from uh, the videos and saw that it was Stuka. So I said, oh, it's Stuka. And he said, hey, you know Plane Saver? <laughs> and he, then I was like, yeah, I know. I, I've been watching uh, since, like, uh, since the, the early episodes and stuff. And he said, oh, cool. You know, they're really looking into, uh, they're, they're really looking, uh, into uh, getting new volunteers for the plane. Like they're, they need people during the week because the weekends there's people, but not during the week. So I was like, oh, nice. And he really like, got me into, uh, like convinced me of working for Plane Savers. So I never really sent an email like to get enrolled or whatever. I just showed up because he told me to show up. So yeah, it's, it's all beginning with that. That story with Shuka. Is the cat like right on the other side? Don't open the door, he's gonna kill it. Shuka, he's coming. Shuka, he's luck. It's a treat. Oh, the cat's right outside, I can see it. Come here, Shuka. I met Chuka in the street before my kid, before Stella. <laughs> so thank you, John Ray, and thank yeah. you, Stuka. You want to leave already? <laughs> I had only known the Genesis version. I'm a Super Nintendo guy. This is where Wales wins! You got an addiction, and it's called NHL 94, and you're just gonna have to deal with that. Okay, everybody. Hi. I'm here with Lauren McGinnis, CBC Zone, and uh, hey, Lauren, good to see you. Very good. So we're actually here to talk about a movie, a certain movie that's going to be playing at the Yellowknife Film Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take over. I want to talk. I want to ask you about oh. the movie. <laughs> Pixelated Heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that taking over? No, no. This is good. <laughs> Keep talking. What's it about? Uh, it's about hockey, and especially it's about. Uh, 1994, uh, NHL 94 on Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, one of the best video games ever made. And I decided uh, if it is, it deserves its own movie. So I spent almost three years chasing down why some people like myself think it is the best video so game. So is it like, is it, a, is it a movie about video game fanatics or is it a movie about NHL pros or? It's, it's got everything. To, to, to tell the story, it's not about this video game, about people. The one thing normally, like if you wanted to make a documentary about Mario or yeah. Zelda, they don't exist. We got Yager, we got Cliff Ronning, Glenn Anderson, uh, we got Kelly Rudy. Uh, we got Jordan Tutu, we got lots of okay. NHLers, so a lot of stuff. Who who was the most, like, who showed up for this hard of those pros? Who was into it? The best, easily Cliff Ronning. Cliff okay. Ronning, who's known for this game, especially the Super Nintendo version. Uh, yeah, he was over the moon and was super, you know, spent the whole day with him. He was being amazing. But, you know, uh, Glenn Anderson and, and Steve Larmer are actually really cool, too. But okay. Ronning actually knew everything was going on. Uh, Glenn and Steve kind of had no clue what was happening but they were really good sports and did you get your heart broken by anybody wow you gotta watch the movie and see really but that's, you do that's the truth yeah it's not all roses folks there's some downside rejection for my yeah yeah so you proud of the film yeah you know the film's been it's been really good it's been a long go you know and behind the camera we got jane pablo here that's hiding november 7th yes. thursday night 9 20 Capital Theater, people can get tickets. Down in the link below, there's always a link below. Link so, below, that's, link below. you're good at this. YKFilmFest.com. Yeah. Was it? It's YKFilmFest.com. Oh sure, yeah, we're on social media big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We were definitely a bunch of professionals, but bottom line, the whole reason for this video is you can come check out Pixelated Heroes Thursday, November 7th at the Yellowknife Capital Theaters. Come visit us, we'll all be there. Lauren's MCing, it's gonna be great. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe see my heart being broken, maybe we, we can go for beers later, who knows? Anyway. Awesome. See you guys, see you there. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I'm gonna make this very, very quickly. Free movie tickets. 
If you're in Yellowknife and you want to see uh, Pixelated Heroes, uh, just send me an email, plainsavers at gmail.com. I'm going to give away five tickets randomly. These are absolutely free. You can come watch the premiere with us. Uh, there'll be a Q&A, come see us, all that fun stuff. Pixelated Heroes, plainsavers at gmail.com. For Midway, so this is really cool. The, the movie Midway, which is all about World War II, uh, the makers of the movie actually sent me some prize packs and they want to give it away to the Plane Saver fans. And this is why I'm putting it at the end of the video because I want to make sure it's the hot hardcores. The only downside to this is uh, Canadian tickets, so it's only for the Canadian fans, sorry. Uh, I'll make it up for the international fans somewhere down the line. But just send me an email, uh, planesavers at gmail.com, uh, asking uh, to have a set. So these are two tickets, uh, three sets of two. So you can take a friend, family member, or whoever you want. Just send me an email, planeservers at gmail.com uh, with the code word hockey to, to prove that you made it to the end of the, the episode. And I'm going to randomly pick uh, three uh, people to send the tickets to. So hopefully uh, that works out. Thank you for joining us. It is getting very, very cold. It is minus 14 degrees Celsius, which is going to be probably, I don't know, 20 degrees Fahrenheit right now. It is getting not that nice. So you guys, see you guys in the next one. I'm actually going to go start filming episode 21 right now. So we'll see you very, very soon. Bye.